Warning, this show may contain material that is not suitable for some audiences. Listener discretion is advised. The Lord is War. Say something. This is new to Foo Jeez. Kinda have resting dig face. Like I said, a lot of it. Like a hole. No, exactly. Like a hole. The fuck. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the irrelevant podcast number three, third base. My original idea was just let you listen to my wife and I fucking, but I didn't think she'd be down for that because you know most people they get down on the third date. Maybe we'll just keep this a little more PG-13. and You can follow me on Twitter at TheLordBizwa. And you can follow me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TheLordBizwa. It's a little repetitive, I know, but hey. All of my older podcasts are going to be on YouTube because I have unlimited space on there. I'm kind of a broke bitch. So I'm only going to keep two podcasts on SoundCloud at a time. But all of my older stuff will be on YouTube until I have the means to pay for an unlimited account. (laughs) So, I am sitting here with my wife. Um, I'm sure you've, if you've been listening at all, you'll recognize her voice from, you know, the recorded conversations I've had. Um, My nickname for her is Thumper. I don't know, I, I wanted to bring her in because I had talked about our first date and where, you know, how that happened, how that went down. Um, but that's only my side of the story, and I really want her side of the story. So, I was going to ask you, the first question is, when, okay, so, so we met working in a restaurant together, and I worked in a different restaurant within the chain, uh, prior to that, and then I transferred to your store. Mm-hmm. Um, my question is, is... Did, was there any sort of, did anybody have, have any prior knowledge to me showing up? Like, did you find out that, like, you know, yeah, there's going to be this guy coming in, you know, did, was there any reputation that preceded me, or was it just, you showed up and I was there? Well, that's kind of a hard one, because it was kind of sort of both. Um... There for a little while, we had a graveyard manager when I started working in a graveyard who was talking about, like, trying to go back to school and stuff, and he, there was rumor that he was going to be leaving, um, if his financial aid went through, he's going to be, like, moving down to Eugene or something like that, and, um, basically, like, we heard at some point that there was a possibility he was leaving, but that was it. We didn't hear that we were going to have a replacement or anything along those lines, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of figured we were going to just because he, at the time, was, you know, the second graveyard manager that they had in the store, and that was it, you know, because I wasn't 18 yet, so I was still in training. And, um, you know, wasn't completely promoted, so they couldn't technically leave me on the floor by myself or anything. But, uh... You know, so I was like, okay, whatever, we'll just see what happens, because this dude kind of seemed to be a flake a lot of the times, and, like, you know, what he said didn't necessarily become true. But basically, um, you know, we didn't really hear anything other than that one rumor, and it went around the store for, like, maybe two weeks, and then, like, nothing happened. The guy just kept working for us, and then it was, like, all of a sudden you know, a month later, he was gone and you were there. Like, you you just kind of popped up. We didn't know. Like, I had no idea that you had come from, you know, Lebanon. I knew when I first showed up that you had prior experience, but I didn't know anything about you. So, it was, it was, we, we kind of knew, but it was still a really big shock at the same time. So, what was your first impression then? <sighs> See, that's a really hard one because, like, Half the time, um, when I first, like, when I first walked in, you had this very 
alpha persona about you. Not to mention you're, like, ginormous. You're tall, and I'm not used to seeing people like that, you know? Because, like, I'm the tall person in the group. I always have been. Even around, like, even the guys that I hang out with aren't even necessarily taller than me. And if they are, it's only a little bit, you know? Most of the time, I'm the same height as them. So, we first walked in, and of course, you're four inches taller than me. I'm just like, whoa. (laughs) And then, I don't know, I kind of figured, like, I kind of pinned you for being a complete dick. Like, being an asshole to me. Um, Because, like I said, you were very alpha personality. Like, I hadn't even really spoken to you yet, and I could just tell that about you. Um, Not to mention, you had this very high level of confidence when you first walked in that door that it was intimidating, but not in a way that, like, made me want to back down. You know, it was just, it was almost like it was shocking, because I hadn't really found somebody who was willing to go head-to-head with me, and, I mean, well, I'm freaking really bullheaded, and you seemed to do that right off the bat. You were just kind of like, alright, this is how it's gonna be, (laughs) you know? Um, and, I don't know, like, you kind of have resting dig face, so... I kind of thought you were going to be like a lot of those people that walk in and judge me and basically just think I'm going to be some dumb, you know, bimbo blonde because I got, I'm curvy and, you know, I'm a chick. But when it really came down to it, that was completely wrong. <laughs> well, okay, so I guess real quick, for some of the people that listen that haven't met us, uh, it would it would do, do them some good to describe how we look. So, me... I'm six foot four, you know, four hundred plus pounds, but it's not just like I have a gut, but it's not like you know I'm not one of those guys that needs a flatbed truck to go to go to the store and go shopping. Oh hell no! Um, <laughs> my legs are fucking rock hard. I mean, it's actually crazy scary. I will tell you that right now, people. The teen like teenage <laughs> mutant ninja turtles would be jealous of my calves. <laughs> If anybody's ever watched the, those movies or the cartoons, those guys always have insane calves. Mine are even crazier. Um, and under underneath my gut, I swear to God, I, I must have a six-pack because I can do sit-ups for days. Um, you know, and I guess the biggest thing for me is while I've always just kind of felt like I'm kind of, you know, this fat, ugly chud. No I think from the neck up, I'm actually okay. Because I've, I've got a damn cute face. <laughs> like, you can't stay mad at me because this face is fucking cute. And the thing that sucked, though, was like leading up to us getting together was that it only seemed to work on middle-aged chicks. <laughs> you know, I was like 20 at the time, 21. And well, the, I- only, the only women interested in me were like... 30s to 40s. Well, like, okay, I want to point something out. Like, when I first met you, I thought you were way older than you were. Yeah, everybody You did. know, so it was like, it was kind of like your personality and your maturity level. Like, you put off this persona of somebody who was, you know, a generation ahead of their time. So it was like, I think that had a lot to do with it. Not to mention, you didn't really, when I first met you, you did not look like you were only 20. Like, you seriously did not look like you were 20. If I were to peg you in age when I first met you, I would have said 27, 28. Yeah, I always got 26. I always got 26. You know, but... And the fucking other high school kids, I had them convinced that I was a nom. (laughs) There's a couple of them that would, like, they'd see a cut on my arm, like, or, like, you know, a scar... And it was just, you know, it was just one of those things, like it was a burn or something. <laughs> you were put back work. in high school because your PTSD made you forget basic there algebra, and so you're trying to relearn your maths and get your, you know... <laughs> but but they'd look at it, and they'd be like, what's that scar from? And I'd be like, oh, I got that back in Nam. And they'd just be like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then turn to their friend, dude, he was a Nam. Like, I had them convinced that I at least killed one person. Oh, God. At least. See, I had everybody convinced that I was, like, that psycho chick, that I was really cool, but don't piss me off. Like, don't, don't push me, because there's just something wrong with me. That's what everybody thought of me when they first met me. Well, it's the truth. Yeah, it is, and, like, oh, God, it used to be so terrible when I was a kid, just because I was really sweet and laid back and really cool until you pushed my button, and it, I mean... I like to push your button. (laughs) 
<clears throat> it takes a lot to get to that point. Right. You know, but yeah, I am kind of that weird, creepy chick. I always have been. <laughs> so, and okay, so I guess to describe you, um, you are pretty much the perfect female for me. <clears throat> and I word it that way because it just... You're, I'm an alpha, and you're an alpha. So when we <laughs> when we find like when we got together, it was like it was like two leaders of the pack, and oh god, know, but we hated each other when we first met. Well, that's we'll get there. <laughs> um, but I mean, you you're six foot tall, yeah, which is pretty pretty damn crazy for a girl. Um, so. So you know, and and I and I knew that I needed so to find a girl. Without the hip problems, I'd have an extra inch. <laughs> <laughs> I you know I knew I needed to find a girl that wasn't tiny because that just weirds me out. Oh God, mind you, real quick, saying that like before you, all the other people that I had ever been in a relationship with were always shorter than me. I mean, for God's sakes, I'm wearing sandals in my prom picture, and I'm still two inches taller than my date. Like it's sad. <sighs> That's how sad it is. Like, people, if you were really tall, if you could find a guy who's taller than you, freaking keep him. It's worth it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and well, okay, and then, and then, your hips are just... Oh, (laughs) jeez. Legs for miles. Oh, God, it's the Granados Curse. Uh, Or not the Granados Curse, the... (laughs) For you, Gertis. For you <laughs> That's what I meant Gertis to say. Curse. Yeah, the Gertis curse. Uh, the legs for days and the wide hips, the uh-huh. the child birthing hips. Yup. Everybody's fertile myrtle in my family. That's I mean, for damn sure. F- Thirteen kids from my grandmother. That's freaking crazy. <laughs> like, jeez Louise, Grandma, I love you, but damn. <laughs> uh, well, and then and then I've mentioned the tits, your tits. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so I was, like, really thinking about that the other day, and I was comparing, like, sizes and stuff, so I was thinking about it. When I first met you, I was in a double D. Okay, (laughs) that was when, like, you very, very first met me. In the seven years that we have been together, I had jumped seven cup sizes. Like, not a round. Like, that has stayed completely the same. Right. But the cup size, seven sizes. That is freaking ridiculous. Thank you. No. I love you for it. You don't have to carry this shit around and, like, deal with the back problems and trying to find a fucking bra. Do you know how uncomfortable a bra is? Well, I'm just impressed that you're this perky after three kids. (laughs) Okay, that one is true. Like, I I am very proud of the fact that I'm still perky after three kids because, uh... You know, there are a lot of women out there, and I feel so terrible for them, and, you know, I feel for them, but sometimes breastfeeding does a number on you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm just, I got lucky, I guess. Good bras. I got lucky. Very good bras. No. <laughs> I'm the lucky one. Oh, man. If I could, like, detach them for a day and just, like, give them to you to carry around, I totally would. And you know what? I wouldn't care the fact that you wouldn't stop playing with them, like, all day. Because you would get enjoyment out of it. I'd just be... i just... Uh, I'd just be fucking them all day. Oh, God. <laughs> i just make a Get cock back, sandwich. they're all sticky and goopy. i just make a Ugh. cock sandwich with your tits and just... Oh, God. Terrible. You wouldn't... The kids wouldn't see me for a day, at least. <laughs> I'd call you up, upstairs every now and then. <laughs> Can you come finish me up? No. <laughs> please, please come finish me up. Uh, okay, so... (laughs) Back to the random pain subject. Alright, so... Okay, there's one thing that you've mentioned to me that I've always wanted a little bit more details on, and that's that you've said that when we first met you thought I was gay. Uh, Yeah, definitely. Um, That one's kind of hard to explain, because, like... It wasn't necessarily that I thought you were full-blown gay. I don't know. You kind of came off as being gay, but then there was other times where it was like you weren't homophobic necessarily. You were just kind of like, nah, not my style. But you were so goddamn flirty with everybody, including all the guys at work. And, like, (laughs) there were some times that it was so just genuine and, like, serious looking that I couldn't tell if you were joking or not. I really could not tell. 
Oh my gosh, you would get so close, like almost to the point where you would poke other guys' buttholes just for the hell of it, just to freak them out. And like in high school, I was champion again. <laughs> oh yeah, well I mean so was I, but you know, because <laughs> I'll kiss a guy, I don't give a shit. <laughs> but no, and that's what I'm saying is like you're not homophobic, but like I don't know, you just have that that I'm cool with it. Just don't do it to me. I don't know type vibe. But like when I first met you. You were very, I don't know, almost feminine in a sense. Like, you just, you just got women almost. So, I mean, like, and and any guys that I had ever, ever talked to that kind of had an understanding of women were either A, gay, okay, or bisexual of some nature, um... Or B, lived in, like, a house full of nothing but fucking women. You know, just, like, five sisters and a mom and that's it. And, like, the occasional crazy aunt that comes over and, like, you know, <laughs> like, tries to, to do the mother hen thing. But even still, I mean, like, you just got women, it seemed like. So, between, like, all the flirting and, like, the touchy-feely stuff between you and the other guys, especially, like, the guys on Graveyard, it was, <laughs> it was crazy ridiculous. Like, there were some nights I would just sit in the back, like, counting my tills and stuff, and I'd watch on the security camera, and you and, like, some of the other guys would just be sitting there and, like, pretty much be playing, like... Grab ass. Yeah, like, either grab <laughs> ass or, like, uh, I swear to God, it was like you were trying to play table hockey with your nut sacks or something, because, <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, I would see, like, one of y'all sneak up behind the other and just, like, whoop, like, <laughs> you know, like, poke the taint and then run off as the other one's like, whoa, and just, like, freaking out, so... I mean, I don't know. There were some points where I legitimately thought you were just extremely gay because you would come off not necessarily as, like, super rainbow, but very flamboyant. <laughs> I, okay, so I'm definitely, I'm definitely not gay, and I'm not bisexual. Because, I mean, I've had this conversation with myself. There's been plenty of nights, like, especially when I was single, I was like, you know, it'd be late at night. I wonder if I'm gay. And I'd look at a picture of a dick, and I'm just like, mm, no. And and I've had a lukewarm hot dog in my mouth, and it wasn't my <laughs> cup of tea. I wasn't down. I didn't like it. But it doesn't. It doesn't feel like a lukewarm hot dog in your mouth. It's it's more. I would have to say the texture of a brat. Like. <laughs> well, and then and well, and on top of it, like. Like I don't know how you. I would think it, if you were to. I, I would think if you were to put like a soft dick in your mouth, it'd feel like a lukewarm hot dog. But like when it's hard, it feels more like a bra. I don't know. Like <laughs> I don't know how you do it because I'm not circumcised, and and I just imagine the foreskin would just like fuck with my tongue, like tickle my mouth. No, because I mean, like you hold it back, like it just naturally retracts back, anyways. And like, of course, you know you. D- you don't want the dick just, like, flopping around and hitting you in the fucking nose and in the face and just blah, you know? Because then you can't see shit. You just got, like, crap flying everywhere. But, like, what you do is, I don't know, you just, like, hold it. You hold the fucking shaft and, you know, just keep it steady. There you go, third base. <laughs> um. But, like, I don't know. Like I said, it's it's not necessarily, I don't know. It doesn't feel like a lukewarm hot dog to me. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, I will admit this, though, like, I, okay, I have an appreciation for beauty, and so, you know, there's plenty of times where I'll see a, a good-looking guy, and, and I'll make comments. I can't help it. Um, we have this one electrician that comes into the store, and he's kind of got this, like, Nathan Fillion sort of rugged look. Oh, God, I would lick him ten ways to Sunday. And I'm not going <laughs> to lie. He was up on a step stool. I caught myself staring at his dick for like three seconds. Oh shit! At least. <laughs> Are you sure you're not a uh, bi curious over here? <laughs> I don't know. All I know is he's a good looking guy, and if I looked like that, I'd be fucking happy. Uh, oh my god! It's... Me and me, like I'll get on the headset with the girls. Okay, just between us girls. Holy crap! And they're like, yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, God, it was like that one chick that we used to work with. 
Oh, that ass, though. Fucking talk about an apple oh, bottom. Oh, yeah. Yes. Let's just call her Blondie for the sake of the podcast. Uh. Okay. God damn. Damn. Mm. I am not going to lie. There were like freaking days where I was running, you know, like basically having to deal with running the shift and stuff when they switched me over to opening. I would purposely put her in drive through because she was so short she would have to bend out the window. Sorry, sexual harassment probably, but guess what? She came up and was like, hey, by the way, if you and your husband ever, or like you and your well, boyfriend at the time, but she always said husband because she was like, y'all just act like you're married anyways. Um, she was like, you know, if you ever want to mess around, just let me know. I'm down to party. What the fuck? And I'm you like, never... well, oh my you... god, I'm so she mad at you right now. She was underage. She was underage. Worth it? No, not worth. worth it. Thank you very much. Worth. That is the whole reason why I didn't mention it to you until now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. this is like four years okay, to really. five years down the road. You know. <laughs> I guess not really worth it. Um. But even still, no, like, and and that was the only reason why I did it, because she fucking knew that I'd stare at her ass, and I would just be like, oh god, oh, there were times please, where, please, just, because she she'd come in wearing yoga pants, like as as her work pants, and there were times where I would just like, I'd have I'd make any excuse to walk behind her, and just watch. Yeah, and what's really funny, and I know this sounds like it was, he was like totally <laughs> terrible to me, but no, you guys don't understand. We would like, what is it called? Um, when when you, uh, we would like flank her basically. Like oh, she yeah. would be in grill, okay, like standing at the fryers, like, and like we team. have this table, you know. And so basically, <laughs> it's basically this like little hallway, and uh, you know, Santi would go around the. Damn it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You would go around, like, one side, and I would go around the other side, and we would just, like, come up next to her, and we'd both stand next to her and be like, Hey, what's up? <laughs> you know, and we'd just sit there and bullshit with her and laugh. She was a cutie, though, and she was freaking pretty kick-ass for her personality, too. Yeah. I guess she's a personal trainer now. Oh, uh, that's really fucking cool, because that was what she wanted to do. I know she was trying to get into school for that. Like, that was her goal, was to go over to OSU and get into school for being a personal trainer. As far as I know, she's uh, up in Portland now, being a personal trainer. Well, I mean, we she's probably Facebook stalker. Somebody... Yeah, I know. Gosh, <laughs> I haven't seen her in forever. See if she's got any good pics. Uh, okay, so I definitely wasn't... I'm definitely not gay. Even though I can, per, like, appreciate, you know, a good-looking man. But really what it comes from is, is that... Growing up, I had my mom and my sister all the time. Like, that, those are the people that I lived with growing up. And so I got to hear all about the periods. And I got to hear all about the guy problems. And I got to, like, basically learn how they think. Oh, dear Lord, when you're listening to this, listen to this little teeny tiny sketch... You sounded like your mom right there. <laughs> like <laughs> it happened. <laughs> just the slightest little bit. Oh, it you happens. definitely sounded like your mom. That was weird. <laughs> there. Oh, when, when sorry. I, I just figured I'd point that out. <laughs> when I upload her, her, when I when I get the podcast of me and her up, uh, people are gonna be like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, you guys actually have a lot of very like you and your mom have a lot of very similar personality traits, but like you and your dad have a lot of like the physicality traits similar. Yeah. Like you know, you guys both get kind of twitchy, and you guys like if you get irritated, you both have the same like twitch essentially that you do. <laughs> ticks. Yeah, the same ticks and stuff. But like you and your mom, it's like the personality is where you guys intertwine and like click. It's really weird. Right. Okay. So. So then, I guess my next question, um, well, okay, so, so as we started working together, I, I didn't really like you. I thought you were... You didn't really like me. I He's thought you were He's being a bitch. modest, people. He hated the shit out of me. Oh, you my God. You kept telling God. me how to do my goddamn job. You kept, like, telling me that I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, even though I worked there just as long as you had. Nuh-uh. Yeah, huh? I was working... I would worked for at least two years. Yeah, and that's the same with me, remember, because I started before I got pregnant with our first child. Okay. And, uh, so I was 16... And by the time you rolled around, I had, it was like right before my 17th birthday, or my uh, 18th birthday. It was, it was, little, it was 
ways I know, before. It was, it was a little ways before my 18th birthday. So we had worked there I just to, around the same amount around, of time. I want to say I started around November at your store. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway. Um... So, yeah, I mean, like, we, we butted heads mm-hmm. a lot. And, you know, like, at the time, you had Dakota, and you were going to school, and you yeah. were working full-time, and so you didn't bother doing your makeup, and you just have your hair pulled back so, like, so tight, you'd be chink-eyed. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really bad. Just, like, messy bun, as tight as I could possibly get it. Didn't have bangs, they were just, like, the same length as the rest of my hair, so it was just, like, all squeezed so tight. It was like a eye lift gone bad, almost. It was, it was terrible. And I was always tired, because, like, if I was lucky, I'd get ten hours of sleep a week just because going to school full time, being a teen mom, and you know, not really having anybody that I could lean on for help or anything. Not to mention I was working full time and overtime. You know, it just to kind of like make things go by with my son and be able to pay bills and stuff. It was just I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> like my face, zero fucks given at that point, just because I was just trying to get by. Right. You know, so I really did not make an effort to be pretty or feminine in any way. <laughs> uh, so, so then, I mean, at that point, we were working a lot of evenings together. And evenings were a real boys club. Oh, yeah. It was, it was like me, well, you, me, Cody, and Jakari most nights. Yeah. And occasionally we'd have James, too. Depending on if if he came in, like, if they wanted him in early or not, you know, depending on what night it was. Yeah. And so I guess, I guess the, one of the things that I, that I, that I, I think I mentioned on the last podcast, but so there's, there's one night where you came in and you were, Wearing a, like, just a spaghetti strap. I was dressed in my civvies. Yeah, you were in your civvies. Okay, because the uniforms that we wore, or that we wear, Oh, man, those things were so horrible. They desexualize everyone. Oh, God, like, we're talking just, you, like, a freaking surfboard in a, in, in, like, a freaking paper sack would look better than putting somebody in these uniforms. It was just horrible. So bad. And then, of course, you know, you add that on top of my I don't give a fuck. I really did not look like a chick to them. It Mm-mm. was just, I was another one of the dudes, okay? For sure. <laughs> so, you come in. Well, okay. <coughs> it was late at night. I guess I'll, I'll, des- I'll describe it from my point of view. I was in the office counting tills. And I look up at the monitor that shows all the cameras. And we had a red box inside the store. And... I look up, and all I see is this long, wavy, flowing red hair (laughs) and cleavage. (laughs) Because the angle of the camera is up above you. And we had this this code, because most of the time I'd be up front, you know, running the shift and everything, and, and Jakari and Cody would be in the grill, and I would, in order to let them know, like, hey, there's a hot chicken lobby, I'd be, you know, I'd go, giggity. Mm-hmm. And mind you guys, I knew that they had this code because there was a lot of the times where I would man the cameras for them, and I would be the one saying that if they were busy. <laughs> um, you know, because it was really cool. We all had the same taste in women. Like seriously, we all had the same taste. So it was really easy for us to just be like, "Dude, look at that shit," and like totally. <laughs> Just Cody was picky as hell, though. Oh yeah, Cody. (laughs) He's oh god, he's a character. Let's just put it that way. (laughs) Was he still a virgin when we were working with him? And the only reason he was still a virgin is because he wanted to nail a perfect ten before. Yes, yes, that is very very true. That was his. That was the stipulation. Like he wasn't going to just give it up to any girl. He wanted a ten. Yep. Or at least what he saw as a ten. Yep. <laughs> um. So he was he was pretty picky, but uh, he was he was still really cool. He's got he has his opinions, and he's definitely, you know, you you gotta learn to love him after a while. But uh, 
He's, <laughs> it's just, he was definitely one of those, like, oh god, like, uh, not a sorority. The other one. Frat? Yeah, he's, he was definitely like a frat boy. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Like, that was, that was like his personality, but he was definitely totally Jakari. fine. Oh yeah, Jakari was a hella frat boy, but. I, I realized how, how arrogant he could be, but fuck, I, I still liked the shit out of him. Oh, God, he used to be such a dick to me until one day I finally just looked at him and I was like, what the fuck is your problem? What? What? And I was just like, why do you treat me like shit? What did I ever do to you? And, like, he just looked at me like, well, what do you mean? And I just started pointing everything out. And he was like, oh, well... I didn't even realize I was doing it. And I'm like, yeah, either stop or go home. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't like that. So from that point on, he like... And then again, I think it was... I, th- I think if I remember correctly, you actually said something to him as well. Pro- because I, I had so. I had like mentioned it to you that I was getting really pissed off and frustrated with him or something. Well, and that was even before we were going out, so... It was, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, so I'm back there counting tills. See the red hair and cleavage, and I come running out of the office going giggity giggity red box giggity giggity and the two guys just dropped everything they were doing and hauled ass up front so we and i mean it couldn't have been quiet we come clamoring up front and right as we no, get it wasn't quiet just, just before we get to mind you i'm the only customer in the lobby at this point yeah because it, it was like it was, like it was still winter. At, yeah, it was like 11 o'clock at night, too. It was pretty late. Um, so right right before we get into view, we all slow down to a casual walk. And we just kind of like slowly walk up to the counter, kind of lean on it, look one direction, and then scan over and look at you. Oh, God, you guys were so fucking obvious. It was so terrible. I was, like, having a really hard time not laughing at every single one of you. Because I knew that's <laughs> what was going on, was the whole giggity situation. Like, I fucking knew it. <laughs> so at that point, I'm like, hey, how's it going? And you're like, oh, just rent a movie. Cool. And we all walk back to the grill, and, uh, and they're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> that's a... Thank you, phone. That's Laura. What the fuck? And I was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go talk to her." And they're just like, "Fuck you." No, you're not. I'm like, "Yeah, I am." I'm gonna. I'm gonna go talk to them, or I'm gonna go talk to her. And and she and they're just like, "Whatever. You don't have the balls." I'm like, "Fuck you. Yeah, I do." Because at that point, like, okay, I had been, I had been kind of single. Basically, for, you know, fuck, at least over a year. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was over a year. And I I just kind of accepted that, that like, chicks weren't just into, like, they just weren't into fat dudes. <laughs> you know? Straight up. And, and I'm too shallow to kind of, like, date on my standards, I guess. <laughs> like, like, I mean, I'm always telling people, like, oh, I totally married out of my, out of my league, like, and I show pictures of you, and they're like, fuck, and I'm like, yeah. no, no. Um, anyway, so, so I just, I was like, all right, I'm gonna go be creepy, and I walked up, and I'm like, so, what's up? How's it going? Renting a movie? What you looking for? And you're like, I don't know, I'm just kind of looking, you're looking at some lot film. I'm like, oh, that's bullshit. Don't don't rent that one. And that was because that was what Fuckstick wanted to rent. It was something he wanted to look at, and I wasn't interested in it. That's why I was just like perusing, trying to find something because I was just not going for it. Well, at that point, I I remember I was kind of like, all right, well, here, and I helped you browse through the yeah. movies, and I ended up basically picking it for you. So I guess I guess my next question would be, at one at what point did you start to, like, get interested and, like, have feelings in me? I don't know. I didn't actually start f- really falling for you, I would say. Like, really starting to think, okay, I kind of want this to go somewhere. Until after our first couple of dates when we were sitting in the car. It was that day. Well, those weren't really Dates. I I know I no I'm just saying like but, our first couple of get-togethers because like yeah 
Because, okay. The first one, Danielle was with us. Yeah. And, and then the when... second one was was Kyle was sitting in the back. Uh-huh. Um, so, really what it comes down to is... I remember your... Okay, so your mom was working with us at the same time and she was actually uh, like she was actually higher up than me yeah she was the assistant right and and so um so like you know there was that but then also she would ask me to give you rides home yeah because for a while there we were both getting off around nine or ten yeah and so I would give you rides home, and whenever we were in my car, I would just start talking about whatever the fuck I wanted to talk about, because that's what I do, hence the podcast. I would start talking about music or movies, and you just had to sit there and listen, because I already listened to your bullshit all day. <laughs> fuck you, it's my turn. You're in my car, it's my turn to just Yeah, and you know what? Talk. I was totally okay with that, and I really allowed you to do that, because I knew you needed it, too. Right. You know? And so I but think... But, like, okay, so I would have to say, the first time... I actually thought about giving you a chance, I should say. Um, Because, like I said, when I first started to get to know you, I didn't see you in, like, the dating realm. Like, I didn't think about dating you or, you know, anything along those lines. It Mm -hmm. was more of like, okay, you know, this dude has been a really good friend of mine. Um, You know, I I got pretty close with you on the aspect of, like, what was going on with you and, you know, Washington, let's just call her Mm -hmm. for now, and, um, at that point, I was kind of giving you the same respect, even though I had broken up with, you know, stupid, Mm -hmm. but I knew that was still kind of a touch and go for you, so, Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I would definitely have to say, like, the first time I thought about giving you a chance was, it was the night we were sitting in the office, and we were, like, dead. We were so dead, because it had just barely snowed, but then it had mm. iced over, and it was that night that we all went out and built little it tiny... Marched. Yeah. We had built those little teeny tiny um, snowmans out on the back of the cars, and we were, like, throwing snowballs at each other, and then we wound up closing the store that night early, because mm-hmm. nobody was showing up. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it was that night, because everybody Well, else... isn't that the night that we ended up hanging out with Danielle? Yeah. Okay. Um... That was the night that I was like, you know what, I think I'm going to give him a chance. You know, but I wasn't really set on it being a relationship. I figured we would just have a little bit of fun. Not necessarily a rebound, but yes and no. Well, you were still same... at, with him at the time. But you had already basically decided... Exactly. That at that point, I had already made the decision. I was just waiting for him to build up enough credit, essentially, from Job Corp to buy his own fucking bus ticket, because I wasn't going to do it, which is why it took an extra month before I got to, or a month and a half before I got to actually, like, break it off with him. Right. Because that was when he finally came back down, was right before my birthday, and that was the only reason why he came down, was for my birthday, apparently, and then never fucking, yeah. But, uh, anyways, I think it was that night, because... Well, I mean, if I remember right, from then on, you kept asking me, when are we going to hang out? And uh, that's when I'd have to be like, well, are you 18? Yeah, and (laughs) the reason being is because, like, you had just really started having some problems with the whole Washington situation. Right. You know, and it wasn't necessarily that, like, you guys were fighting or having anything like that. It was just, like, you guys had kind of both come to this this mutual decision that, you know, you were going to kind of live and let be and part ways essentially you know i mean it wasn't set in stone yet but it was on his way to being that and you admitted that to me you're like you know this is really breaking me up because i really i really really care for her and i really want it to work but at the same time you know i just so obviously at that point that's when you figured out i'm not gay yeah. Well, no, I had my suspicions a little bit before that because you know, it was when you first started talking about you know, that I started oops, my bad. No, God damn it. <laughs> Bleep it out. No. <laughs> Anyways, um that's when like I f- like really started to feel for you because I saw that you weren't some asshole. 
you know, you really kind of brought out your sensitive side because you showed me what you were outside of work versus just your work face. Because you do. You have your work face and then you have your home face. And, like, your work face is very... The best way to have people, like, understand what I'm trying to say, it's like I tell everybody, you're like a s'more. You're hard and crunchy on the outside. But when you get to the inside, you're warm and chewy. Like, you're really soft and chewy and just awesome. (laughs) Because, like, you do, you have this hard outer exterior and shell that you put on at work mm -hmm. that not a lot of people see, like, the side of you that I do where, you know, you're laughing and, you know, your son comes up and lays on your chest and gives you snuggles, you know. Oh, that would blow everybody's fucking mind. Since you freaking get home after a 10-hour shift and you just kind of, like, sit there like, oh, my God, I love this. (laughs) Or, like, when (laughs) you They know I love my kids. When you, I know, or, like, when, like, Serena does something that makes you really proud or Dakota does something really proud and you kind of tear up a little bit, they don't see that side of you at work. Yeah. They you have, know, they've seen a little bit of it lately. Do, yeah, I know. I was through. about to say, and if they do, it's like, you know, serious shit that they actually see. It's stuff that is really fucking hard, and nobody can really hold that shit back. Right. You know, but it's very, very small glimpses. Mm-hmm. And that was the breaking point where you actually showed me there is a whole nother side to you. Was right. that specific night where... One if I remember the, correctly, the conversation actually started. We, me and you had stepped out for a cigarette because we had, um, oh God, who all did we have that night? I know we had, um, Cody cause he was in grill. He was pretty much man in the grill for us. Uh, and then I think Brian was there that night too. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I remember that. And we stepped, oh, and, uh, crap, what's his face? James. James was there, too. Tall, skinny dude. Yeah. Okay? Because that was supposed to be, like, a projected high night, because it was, like, a Thursday or something, like, Thirsty Thursday, so we, right, we well, had... And, and also, it was that... That's when we had the... Yeah, that's right. So, like, we, we had a full crew, so, so like... we had the special... Because we were so dead, and, of course, everything in the store was freaking clean, top to bottom. All of our crap was all taken care of. Breakfast pulled the whole nine yards, and, right. of course, Cody being in grill had everything set up and ready and just, like... You know, five minute change. I miss over. working with him. Yeah, right. He had it down to a science. He did because it would literally take him five minutes for changeover. Like the way he did it, it was crazy retarded fast. Like, yeah. so of course at that point, me and you, um, you know, decided we were gonna go take a break and we were gonna smoke cigarettes. So we went outside to the uh, to uh, the parking lot side of Third Street mm-hmm. and sat down and smoked a cigarette out there on the bench, like mm-hmm. we usually did. And we started talking, and, like, I don't know. I got, I I mean, as you know, I pick up on feelings and stuff like that, and emotions pretty easily. And I just got this weird feeling, like, you weren't being, like, that night, it was almost like you weren't being as flirty or, like, as, I don't know, bubbly as you usually can be at work. Like, you're, you're definitely, like, stoic and strict, and you have that work face, but you're also very, like... I don't know. What's the word I'm looking for? Not flamboyant. That's not the right word. I don't know. You're just, you just kind of have this uppity, positive personality, like in Mm -hmm. a good way. Right. You know, very bouncy, but like, okay, you got to get your shit done. You know, like, I don't care if you dick off, but get this crap done by the time I say it it gets done, you know, type thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you just, you weren't, yes, there you go. That's what I was looking for. You just weren't quite as boisterous as usual. You just weren't yourself, it seems like. Mm-hmm. And it didn't seem like it was because you were tired or because of anything along those lines. Something else was going on. So I kind of asked, I, you know, that was the night that I asked you, hey, what's really going on? And you actually wound up pulling out some of the poetry out of your guitar case that night and reading it to me and telling me that it was for, you know, Washington and that... This is the, and you explained to me what was going on about how, like, it's been kind of on and off, and you know, you weren't sure if it was going to work out, but you really, really care about this girl, but you feel like it would be best to kind of just let, leave and let be and just let it go, you know, and you both kind of came down to the conclusion. And so it was just, I don't know, it was one of those things where I actually saw the real you. Right. And the second I saw that, it was way better than what I had known before as far as, like, your actual personality. Mm. And that, you know me, I'm very curious, very nosy, very people watcher, okay? And that made me want to kind of, like, 
pick and pull at that little crack in your wall and see where it led. And that's kind of what happened. I mean, you know, and not even really necessarily on purpose. It just kind of happened for the both of us because you did the same for me. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, you've always been... You've always been a bit more of an open book than I am. And I've even had people that have worked with me for a long time tell me, you know, yeah, we talk a lot and, like, you know, you talk about movies and music and stuff like that, but I actually don't know really anything about you. See, but you showed me that part of you. And I saw that you had never done that for anybody else. Well, and then, but, like, in the time time that we've been married, definitely, I've, I've started opening up a lot more at work. And that's honestly just making people like and respect me even more. Mm-hmm. So it's been kind of a good thing. But, I mean, it, it's it definitely... It makes me uncomfortable sometimes. I show a bit more vulnerability than I ever have. I, a lot of that is that I am just more vulnerable than I have been in a long time. Yeah. But... Well, I mean, with everything going on, yeah. Right. But... But, yeah, you, you've definitely brought that out in me a lot. Which I think is a good thing. Because, I mean, I feel like it's kind of, I don't know, almost to help, like, your self-image. Yeah. Your confidence, if oh, that makes sense. Oh, definitely. You well, know, especially like, because, really... like, I'm already married. I don't need to impress anybody, so I just <laughs> say do whatever I want. Hey, you still gotta impress me every once in a while. <laughs> oh, but that's easy. I, I know what impresses you. <laughs> I know I'm a cheap date. Yeah, it's like it's not I, nice to point it out, though. <laughs> I, just, I just have to. I just have to cook you one of my special meals, and and yeah, but a girl could get some flowers every once in a while. <laughs> okay. Except for holiday. No, honestly, I just, I'm totally kidding about that flowers. So then we so so after the the snowball or the snow the snowed in night yeah um we ended up like I was still like okay we're not gonna hang out because you're seventeen and I'm twenty so okay you well you made a point to say we're not gonna hang out by ourselves you didn't you were okay as long as somebody was with us that's true but not by ourselves that's that true. was like the major point which is how we wound up hanging out with Danielle. Mm-hmm. And and a couple of your friends and stuff and yeah. So then we had that night where we sat in your driveway and talked all through the night until the sun came up. And then we went inside. And you made me a little bit of breakfast. And oh God, I don't even remember what I made you. I don't remember either. Um, I'm pretty sure I met your dad for a little bit. Yeah, because he just he came mm-hmm. home from work and then was just like like stood around and talked to us for like five ten minutes. And then went to bed. Yeah. And then I had, I had sort of a lunch date, sort of, with, um, with this other girl. That came later. That was, that wasn't the same night. Yeah, it was. It was the same night because. Oh yeah, it was. I'm thinking. Right. So I had to. I had to drive. You know, I had to drive like. Well, I had to drive home, get changed, get showered. You know. As my dad would say, shit, shower, and shave so you're ready for a fuck fight or a funeral. <laughs> um, and then I went out and hung with her. Now, I remember specifically that you, that I told you, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a call when I get home and stuff, and maybe we can hang out again. Because I had really enjoyed myself. This, this of course, was after you turned 18. Yeah. This was, this, this was finally, you were 18, and I felt comfortable enough to hang out outside of work um so so i was like yeah i'll give you a call but and then and you know with the intent of hanging out and i ended up so tired that day because i mean we worked all evening and then talked all night and then i was out all day and it was i mean it was the summertime so it was fucking hot and i'm fat so heat makes me tired and so I remember I called you and and told you, yeah, I'm just not feeling up to it. Like I need, I need to just go to bed. Mm-hmm. And I apologized. I do remember that. So, what happened after I left? Like that morning when we spent all night sitting in the car talking, and you made me a little bit of breakfast, and then I. And then I left. 
Um, if I remember correctly, after breakfast, I went into my room. Uh, I took a shower because Dakota was still asleep. Um. How are you feeling? You know, that's a hard emotion to describe because I was a lot of confused but at the same time I was like in awe in shock almost mm -hmm. um and I and of course you know I, I definitely had a crush on you and was like you know okay and you, and you have to remember I had really bad self esteem issues back then like really bad self esteem issues back then right and I mean, not that they're really any better now, but still, I mean, you know, it was it was more pronounced back then for me because you know I was still young. I didn't have anybody. I had a baby, and I was pretty young, and mm -hmm. I was just like, oh no, I'm never gonna be pretty. You know, everybody's gonna think I'm nasty forever. You know, type thing. And nobody wants typical, to. Nobody wants to date teenage. a teen mom. Yeah, exactly. And that that was a big one. Was mm -hmm. you know, I had a kid. Nobody's ever gonna want to fucking come and get you know, come and date me. Nobody's ever gonna be interested because guess what? I can't go party at the bars like everybody else can because I'm stuck at home watching my kid you know but I was never in that mentality anyways but uh that's beside the point um like I said there was a lot of emotions running through me I was very confused uh you know kind of in shock and just because I I'd never really been treated like that by anybody before you have a very classic kind of old school way about you like John you know Wayne. yeah you're very you know like i said <laughs> you would open up the doors for me and you Damn know right. you That's would pull out raised. my chair and yeah i mean stuff like that just like the the old school classics that's how i was raised you know you would kiss my hand good night instead Chivalry's of giving me a kiss dead. on my cheek and it just like i said it was i was kind of like happy and floaty like you would a little bit a, giddy yeah, like a little bit giddy. Twitter painted. Um, essentially, yeah. <laughs> Shut when up. when I left, when I was driving away, I was just like I was chuckling to myself and going, "Wow, like, wow, that I had, just happened." Like, yeah, and that's kind of how I was too. Where I was just like, "Okay, I'm I'm kind of okay with this." Like at first, I was very hesitant because I didn't. I didn't know if we were going to click. I didn't know if we were going to have things to talk about. You know, all kinds of crap that was running through my head. And I was just like, oh, God, he's, he, he's going to find out that I'm a teen mom. And, you know. I already knew that. Yeah, I know. Time. But, I mean, like, you had never met my kid yet. That's true. Well, so, yeah, yeah, that's true. So, at that point, I was just like, oh, God, you know, is he going to think I'm some freak? Is he going to think my kid is stupid? Like, or that I'm a bad mom? Or, I mean... There are so many things running through my head, but, like, it just, you really didn't, didn't see all that. You didn't care about any of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you were genuinely, genuinely wanting to know who I was, what my story is, what, what I liked, what I didn't like, what kind of foods I eat, what I didn't eat, mm -hmm. you know, what my favorite color was. I mean, you even went as far as asking me what my favorite season is. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and trying to figure out just the little details like that. And nobody, nobody, as long as I can remember, has ever been that interested in me. Where they wanted to know my backstory. You know, I mean, there's been a couple of times where people will come up and be like, Oh, you know, what's that about? Like, what's that story about? Or what's that inside joke? Or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, or there's like the typical stories that everybody asks. Like, oh, how'd you guys meet? And then, of course, I go into that story or something like that. But... Nobody ever really wanted to know about me, personally. You know, like, who I was. And you really did that. Even just the first little bit that we were talking. Mm -hmm. And you listened. You gave a fuck. Like, you actually remembered shit that most people don't about me. Mm -hmm. You know? So it just, it, I don't know. It, it really sat heavy with me. Because I was, like I said, I had never been treated so good on a date. And I had never been respected the way that you did, even though we weren't necessarily serious or anything. You still treated me that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't treat me like a whole. So it was just, 
Like I said, a lot of it. Into you like a hole? No, exactly. Like a a hole the fuck? (laughs) Exactly. All right, so. (laughs) Some wet, warm, and, you know, slippery. Like, that's it. Like. It's not just warm, it's hot, and I fucking love it. Anyway. (laughs) Okay. Well, like I said, you took the time to give a fuck. That's that's yeah. what it really comes down. Well, to. I mean, and I mean, shit. Hence the podcast. I I love pe- people's stories. I don't know why. As much as I hate people, I still want to hear their story <laughs> most of the time, so people, I can laugh at it. You're a people watcher. You like watching from the sidelines. You don't actually like getting yeah. involved, and that's the same way that I am. My voice. You always get on my ass about that. You say I'm some kind of creeper for doing that, but I'm well, sorry. Well, you're I so just, obvious about it. What? Because I'm zoning off into space. Yeah, because you like zone out on them and you just stare and you like. No, a lot of the times I'm not even staring at that particular person because I can look oh, like I'm zoning okay. over here, but I'm actually well, to me, focused over to there. To me, it looks like you're looking at them because I do the same thing. I'll, 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 be, I'll be staring <laughs> at you, but I'm really paying attention to the the X Men poster. Exactly. You know, like, and that's what I do. And people, and people just think I'm zoning out and that I'm weird or right. <laughs> that I'm stoned, which isn't true most of the time. But but I mean, a lot of times it just looks like you're. It's just too blatant. Okay, well, Let me put it this way. Back then, I didn't have friends. Yeah. I had a couple of people that I would, like, smoke weed with on a regular basis, but it was because I was always the one with the fucking weed, because I was the only one with the money. Right, because you were the only one working. Exactly. Yeah. So, the fact that you kind of gave me that friendship, even though, you know, you just, like, didn't even know me, really, mm-hmm. I don't know. It was really nice. It was really nice to have somebody who actually gave me a second thought every once in a while. You right. know, because in that situation, <laughs> I could be dying of pneumonia. Like, I could, I could fall off of the roof and break my back in front of my family, and they would just sit there and be like, meh, she's fine. I could be choking on my own blood, and they would look at me and just be like, just just roll over. You're okay. They wouldn't care. So, like, having somebody who actually showed that interest in me really kind of made me want to figure out where it was going to go. Mm-hmm. It actually made me feel like I was cared about for once. So, I wanted to, like, cling on to that and dig my claws into it and just never let you go. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so bleep bleep achievable. <laughs> so for me, <laughs> like like I said, when I was driving home, I just kept going, "Wow, like, holy shit, that was nuts!" And I just I was just kind of like, "Fuck, that was that was just crazy." I and <coughs> I okay, so, so I get home, and my mom is. Heading out to work. Mm-hmm. She knew that I was supposed to be off around 9 or 10. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. So, she comes out the door, sees me just pulling in and getting out of my car. and Still in she, uniform. Still in uniform. And she goes, where were you last night? Were you getting some? I, I remember you telling me that. And I was like, well, no. I probably could have. To be honest. Uh, I'll tell you right now, no. Okay. Well. Not not at that point. Only because I was still trying to gauge what kind of person you were. Whether you were a hit it and quit it kind of dude, or you were just down to have a couple of really awesome, you know, fuck sessions, or if you were actually looking for a relationship. Because I didn't want to get involved with anybody who wanted a serious relationship at that point. You have to remember that. Yeah. Because I had just gotten out of the four and a half, five, whatever, with Casey, yeah. and, like, just... Well, I was definitely down for a few fuck sessions, like... Yeah, but, like, at the same time, I didn't want, like, a sleazy couple of fuck sessions. You know, I wanted somebody who I could still be friends with afterwards and, like, still just, like, totally be down with. Right. But, you know, it kind of wound up being that. (laughs) But forever. Sure. It's awesome. It's so cool. I married my best friends. Right. My friends with benefits. I married my fucking friends with benefits. How cool is that? Like, (laughs) that is awesome. (laughs) <laughs> Part How many people could say that they have that? One of the things that made me so nervous about the whole thing, though, was that your your mom was my fucking boss. 
I mean... Can I just point out what made me nervous? (coughs) 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 The fact that she was hitting on you and wanted to sleep with you. I thought she was going to approach me and want to, like... Like, hey, whenever you and Sonya are getting down, let me know. Yeah, I I thought she was just going to be like, okay, details, and don't leave out the dirty stuff, because I want to hear that, too. uh, Whoa. So. Okay, this coming, yeah, it's my mom. Right. (laughs) So. That's for another story. Y'all don't want to meet my mom. She's just crazy, like, nasty. God, when she hears this, she's going to be pissed. No, I fucking love her to death, but... When you, no, when you can admit to yourself that you're a slut and you're okay with it, it's bad. <laughs> Her words, not mine. <laughs> so then, all right. So that now let's keep going with your day after I left. So we're both we're both basically going. Wow, that just happened. Like, what the fuck was that? I've never sat in a car talking to somebody all fucking night long. Yeah. And had, like, nonstop things to talk about. Because most of the time, most of the time, I'm, you know, kind of moving faster than other people, and I'm, you know, way ahead of them, and they're not really following along very well, and, you know, at least at that point, I now I've got a, a, quite a few friends that keep up, no problem, and mm-hmm. I love it. But at that point, I was, you know... I, I didn't have a whole lot of people that were just like, bang, 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 bang. Like, Nathan Nathan knows what I'm talking about, and he, he keeps up, and, and you know, but he's he's not as he's rapid kind of fire. Quiet. Yeah. He's quiet. He's very quiet. He doesn't necessarily he's my have listener. much. Yeah, he's your listener, but I'm the one that'll actually discuss it with you and, like, right. break it down. and fire back, and I need that. A good conversation is, like, fucking foreplay for me, you know? There's been plenty of times where you and I are just talking about anything. Don't we go get a lost I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> There's some smoke for you guys. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, I, I didn't have very many people that would fire back. I had Danielle, uh, eh, but that was to a point, you know, no, no discredit to her, but really what her, it was, talking to her was like talking to my mom. It was like, not that I felt like she's my mom, but it was, it was, I got such great reactions out of her. Mm-hmm. And so that fueled me. So I would keep just, I just keep working it, working it, just just like a comedian working a crowd. Yeah. Um, so leaving leaving your place, I I was just blown away that I found somebody that I could talk to like that. <laughs> and admittedly, I was I was already a bit Twitter pated. I was like, shit, that was cool. Yeah, and like I said, like after we talked, I was definitely Twitter pated. Now, admittedly, I did go inside and kind of just, like, sit there for a little while and just be like, okay, now, where do I go next? Because I had never done the friends with benefits. I had never done the get over a giant breakup and find a rebound or, you know, anything along those lines. I'd never Mm -hmm. done any of that, really. I mean, because any of the relationships that I were in, that's what they were. They were relationships. You know, admittedly, and, I had one that was kind of like that. Well, I mean, for me, for me, it was okay. It was like a friends with benefits. Okay, I do have to admit, thinking about it now, I did have an ex girlfriend that was kind of like that. We weren't right. necessarily serious because, like, she had her other girlfriend, and I kind of had this other girl that I would kind of hang around with, but like wasn't sexual with that girl, but was with my ex. Right. Well, I mean, I call her my ex, but I mean, like, we wound up, again, moving away from each other, as is my fucking life. Right. And, um, 
you know, like I said, I was, we're still friends. I don't talk to her as often. I mean, like, I still see her crap on Facebook every once in a great while. But right. it's not like, you know, Brittany, who I talk to, like, all the fucking time. And this, this is East one Coast. of the things that I actually brag about. <laughs> I brag about the fact that you've really only been with one other dude besides me. Uh, no. Like, I mean, but no, really, like, Oh, like, long-term. relationship, yes. Yeah. yes. Long-term, and so... So I, I love I love just telling them, like, yeah, dude, like, she's pretty much all dated girls. Okay, let's and put it this way. Admittedly, if I hadn't met you, I'd still be a lesbian. Right. Like, I'm just, I'm not... Well, and I, and I keep telling people, just, I tell people that. I'm like, she would totally be a lesbian, but I came along, and my dick is small enough that it's not very threatening, and she's okay with it. <laughs> she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't feel like... She doesn't feel like she's going down on a dude. She feels like she's licking a clit. It's just an oversized clit, right? No. <laughs> no. Like That's what I, I said, joke. No, it's just, like I said, there is just something about it. There's you've something given me about confirmation. It's that... not. It's not that small. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. It's just something about you that like kind of clicked for me. Right. You know, it was. We were of the same mindset, so it was really, really easy. And maturity level. Yeah, exactly. It was just, it was really easy for me to slip into being comfortable with you. And I had never, never, never had that connection with any guy. Ever. Except for my dad. But I mean, like, it's my dad, you right. know? So I've I'm always, a daddy's girl. So I mean, of course I'm going to have that connection with him. I'm always but, getting told that I should be a therapist or something. I Like I said, but, it's not even necessarily that you have that vibe. It was no, just, it's because we clicked I on should so be, many fucking levels. They tell me that I should be a therapist, not because I feel like, like, I give them that feeling that I'm a therapist, but because I give them that feeling that they can talk about anything. Yeah, and, and that's would, true, you And do. it would work for a therapist so well, but the thing is, is like... That's a lot of schooling. Well, that's a lot of schooling, and really, my conversations and my advice is... The only reason it's as therapeutic as it is is because it's in a natural setting. You're not going there thinking, "Okay, I've got to talk to this well, that, psychiatrist about stuff." Well, not you're not having to um, edit yourself because no, like, being, being a counselor and a therapist, you really gotta like keep your fucking trap shut. Like there are some things you are just not allowed to say. Right. But you say them on a regular basis. <laughs> so I mean, it's like for for myself. I had to realize that my past doesn't get to tell me how to live. My yeah, past, I had to do the same thing. And it, my past doesn't get to ruin the rest of my no, life. I don't know what's really funny. You were the one who taught me that. Because, like, before we got serious, I couldn't stop that. And, I mean, yeah, it really does affect me now still. Mm -hmm. But that's to be expected. But, I mean, it just... I don't know, you, that was another thing that really drew you, like, drew me to you, mm -hmm. was you, like, even though you had some of your own confidence issues, and, like, you know, I mean, like, you were very confident, that's not what I mean, but, I mean, like, your, your self-esteem was, yeah. was very definitely, very hypercritical of myself. Yeah, exactly. And, even though you had that problem, you still... Pushed yourself aside and focused on me and tried to help me get past that in myself. Right. Even though you couldn't with yourself. So, like, I don't know. It, it just... I kind of felt like if you could push somebody else to get past that, then I could do the same for you. So and I, wanted to return, I wanted to return the favor, and that's kind of why I, like, pushed you to really try and go for who you want to be instead of just, like, this conformed, you know monotonous robot that society has turned you into because honestly and you can't you can't really deny it you were when i first met you right you were just kind of running on autopilot you weren't really happy you weren't mm -hmm. you, i mean like yeah you had a really decent head start in your career when it and came I, to mcdonald's but it's freaking mcdonald's i mean come i on had now. a fairly fun lifestyle yeah it very just, bachelor did whatever i wanted whenever i wanted spent whatever money i wanted bought whatever i wanted yeah, but can you truly say you're happy? Oh no, God no, I wasn't. <laughs> I was, I was fucking single, basically. I, you know, I was a, I was with a girl that had, you know, gone away for, for school and didn't want to commit to a long term thing. So she, she basically 
told me, I'm, I'm thinking what we can do is when I'm in town, we'll be together, but when I'm at school, we'll just, you know, we'll see other people because I don't want to hold you back. You should be out meeting people. Which, honestly, very mature of her. Yeah. But it's not what I wanted. And what I wanted was to just, like, no, fuck it, I don't need to see anybody else. I really like you. Like, <laughs> I'm totally willing to wait. You know? But then I met you. But honestly, I think the reason I was waiting is to meet you. You know? Um, I'll never forget Washington. You know? I'm always going to consider her a very, very, very oh, close and, friend. and I consider her an extremely close friend, which is right. weird, I mean, considering she's kind of an ex of yours. Right. I mean, at least me and her believe that you don't, but <laughs> we both see you as we being We weren't an official. Ex. So you were, you were official. You were official. It was just, it was a hot and a cold, it was hot and cold official. Right. She thinks it, I think it, it was official. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> but anyways, like, I'm even really good friends with her, you know, so... Yeah. I don't see her as often as you do. In fact, we really don't talk a whole lot. Yeah. But when we do see each other and do talk, oh God, it's like just picking it up like we just fucking talked yesterday. Yeah. You know, and it's, we do, we click, we talk, we have fun, and she's great, and I love her, and she's so sweet. You know, I'm actually kind of happy it wound up the way that it did. Right. Because there's no hard feelings between any of us, which was really awesome. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, so, okay. Especially when I started working with her, and, like, you know, that could have been a really fucking awkward situation. Oh, God, can you imagine if, like, Psycho came in and started working oh, at the Jesus same place Christ. we did? Holy That's crap. That's a story for another episode. <laughs> That's oh, another full Lord. episode, is talking about yeah, our exes. Yeah, anyways, anyways, okay, back to the original conversation. So, alright, so... So, basically, after I kind of got out of my shock and awe, so I, I went to sleep. I passed out for a little bit. I yeah. mean, I, I smoked a fatty-ass bowl and then passed out anyways. Um, as per usual. But, like, Dakota wound up sleeping in probably, oh, I don't know, until about 10 o'clock that morning. He let yeah. me sleep in. Um, and... When he woke up, my dad knew that we were awake all night after working all day and then, you know, whatever. So he wound up taking Dakota for me. So I got some sleep, really decent amount of sleep, woke up, and just had ungodly amounts of energy. So I decided that I was going to go into town because I had that next night off. And uh, at this point it was around like noon, one o'clock, somewhere in there. And so what I did is my dad drove me into the 7-Eleven at the end of Corvallis and I jumped on a bus and went uptown and dropped Dakota off at fuck six. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I decided I was going to go hang out with a couple of my girlfriends. Well, not really girlfriends. They, they were all dykes, but you know, <laughs> my girlfriends, essentially my girlfriends. But, uh, so I went over there and I started talking to one of them and Shauna was like, I don't know. She was, she was a couple of years older than I was. And she was kind of that big sister voice of reason a lot of the time. What my older sister should have been, but never was. Mm -hmm. Um, where like if I had any issues or like I was going through guy trouble or, or girl trouble or, you know, like anything along those lines, I talked to her about it and I'd ask her, you know, for her advice. Um, well, like I got, I went over to her place, which is in Southtown and started telling her about this guy that I had been working with. And how I was kind of crushing on him and how, you know, there was just, I don't know, it was a weird feeling and, you know, I had no idea where I wanted it to go. I just knew I wanted it to go somewhere, you know, but at that point I openly admitted to her that I definitely didn't want a serious relationship, but like, I didn't know how to approach you on that. Because, again, I had never been in a situation where, like, anybody had asked... Well, I mean, okay, I've been asked to be friends with benefits with people before, but I was always just kind of like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> nah, I, can, I can get... No. Like, just, you know, just because, like, 
A lot of the people that asked were just gross. Um, See, and this this is where my understanding of women comes in really nicely because I just decided I'm not going to worry about what it is and I'm just going to let it happen naturally. I I wasn't worried about. No, okay. My main concern about it was I have a bad habit of getting these guys who meet me, okay, and they fall hard and they fall fast, okay. And this has been a problem for a lot of guys that I know, which is why I'm very particular now on who I hang out with and who I don't, you know, just because I don't want you to have to be around that. That's Mm -hmm. disrespectful to you, you know? And that's the thing is a lot of the time I don't even notice it until someone points it out to me. So as soon as someone points it out to me, you know, then I'm (laughs) like, okay, shit, you know, this needs to stop. Well, so I was talking to Shauna about you and how about like... You, I was really afraid that if I kind of just did the whole fling, rebound, you know, friends with benefits, whatever you wanted to call it, that you were going to fall for me, but I wasn't going to fall for you. Because admittedly, physically, you weren't necessarily my type that I was used to. No. You know, so... Because, I mean, like... I'm a big chick. Like, I'm... My fucking nickname from the time I was, like... Shit, I don't know. Eight all the way... Even now, I have people that call me Amazon just because of how tall I am. You know? Um, So, I mean... I don't know. I've never had a guy that I was able to look up to and have that... Okay, I know this is going to sound really, really stupid. and Don't judge me for this. But... That kind of mushy gushy moment where like you look up and then like you have to kind of stand on your tiptoes to kiss him, you know. <laughs> and I'm not saying necessarily that situation, that you know, no, but particular I know exactly scenario. When but you that do it. feeling, I know exactly. You when know, you do it's it. the, it's that connection. That you still feeling. do it to this day. Yeah, I know. Shut Constantly. the fuck up. Don't I love it. judge me. I love it. <laughs> it's adorable. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> like I never really had that. Mm -hmm. I mean, shit, my prom photo, I'm wearing fucking sandals, and I'm still two and a half inches taller than my date. (laughs) So, I mean, (laughs) it's like, I never really got that feeling with somebody. Like, I was on an equal par with them, you know, like, and, and like, with you, I got that. I felt like you were at the same maturity level as me, because, I mean, you know me, I've always hung out with people that were older than me, Mm -hmm. and people that were my age just seemed... So asinine and childish and <laughs> stupid. And it's just like, why in your right mind would you want to go and do something that retarded? You're going to fuck yourself over. Mm-hmm. Like, y- you really want to take your car and dump it out in the middle of a farmer's field when he's got security cameras set up around? Good job. They have your license plate number and it's hooked to your fucking DMV record. Right. They're going to figure it out. Guess what? A week later, he gets arrested. He invited me to go with him, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. You're dumb. Like, people want to do stupid shit like that when, back then, and I just, I wasn't into that. I was past all that, you know? Not to mention I had a kid I had to look out for, and nobody else was doing it but me. Right. You know, so my maternity level went through the roof compared to a lot of people my age. So when I met you, I felt definitely equal. I felt like I had found somebody on the same level as me. So, it just, I don't know. It it was one of those things where I was telling her about how I never really felt somebody who gave a crap about me, like, legitimately cared enough to listen to what was going on and could relate and, you know, pretty much be able to handle all of my craziness that (laughs) we all know I have. And... I just told her flat out, I was like, you know, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to get halfway into this and decide that I just don't want it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't I don't want things moving too fast. I don't want to, you know, and that's the thing is I have a bad habit of falling hard, falling fast myself. Yeah. You know, especially for people that actually show me they care. Because there's so very little of them. Yeah. You know, or at least that's what it feels like. I've so, never been the one to fall hard and fast. I Well, not necessarily like in love, but but in friend, 
I guess. <laughs> whatever, well, yeah. whatever you would call it. You know. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, and it's not even necessarily that I fully trust them. It's just, like, I try and give them, you know, that chance for me to trust them. Right. But, like I said, it was one of those things where I looked at her flat out and I was like, I don't want to hurt him. I was like, I don't want to get, you know, a month or two into this and have him totally head over heels for me or and just, like, smash him down. I'm not that kind of person. I never was. Yeah. You know? And she looked at me flat out and she goes, the mere fact that you just said that proves that it's not going to happen. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she was like, you already care about him in a way that's more than just a fling. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no way. No. I was like, "There's you, you're full of shit. You, you don't know what you're talking about. Shut up, Dyke. And she just laughed at me. Meanwhile, and, my you know, my lesbian friend was telling me, like, <laughs> was telling me, like, no, yeah, you guys can just, like, you know, fuck around for, like, two months and then she'll dump you or you'll dump her and then you'll be happy and it'll be fine. <laughs> and well, I was I'm like, like, yeah, honestly, exactly. That's what I'm at into. At that <laughs> point, I didn't believe her. I was like, yeah, you're full of shit. Whatever you fucking hippie type shit, you know? And I denied it for a long time. You know, I tried to push it off because I didn't want to go head in, long into a relationship right after everything. You know, I was still young. I was trying to, you know, figure out who I was and figure out where I wanted to go with my son and in my life, you know? And I don't know, to try and add in an extra person into that mix, especially, and I know this is going to sound terrible, but the hassle of dating somebody, because it can be, it can be a huge fucking pain in the ass sometimes mm-hmm. to put in the effort. And I just, I didn't want to be that bitch that winds up leading you along and then just, like, dumping you down the road. But there's just something, a gut feeling that was like, no, see where this goes. You know, just just give it a chance. And if you guys wind up breaking up later on, don't think of it as being serious, you know? And, And I just kept having to tell myself, this is gonna be... Pretty much a friends with benefits. Like, you guys are going to be best friends, but you're going to be able to fool around and still be cool afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. You know? that's, that's what I'm talking about. I hope you guys have enjoyed listening to this. Uh, part two is going to be following uh, two weeks from now. Maybe I'll even give it to you early. I don't know. You have to be good kids. Go to bed early. Um, be good, my lovelies, or mommy will get mad. There you go. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't mean that in a weird way. <laughs> uh, so, thanks again. Like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at the Lord Bizwa. That's L O R D B I Z W A H. Facebook dot com slash the Lord Bizwa. YouTube as well. Again, that's where I'm gonna be posting all older podcasts because I can only afford to keep about basically two on SoundCloud. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you didn't, let me know, comment, email me at thelordbizwatyahoo.com and let me know what you want to hear. Because at this point, I haven't gotten any suggestions, so you guys are just going to have to listen to what I want to talk about. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening. You might have to edit that out. Huh? I said you might have to edit that out. You were really loud taking this.